Cypress Development Corp. is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp. trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Cheryl McComsey. She's the founder of Pesticide Free Alberta. Uh, she's also a, a big, big proponent of trying to get clean food and water into our bodies. Something the government doesn't seem to be all that interested in. As uh, we've just seen that major study that found lead contamination in just about every drinking water supply across the country. So many major cities affected by it. And yet I've seen so little reaction from local politicians. They don't seem to care. Yeah, it's very concerning. Um, <laughs> it's it's amazing. The some of the levels were very high, and there were even homes that didn't have lead pipes that had levels of lead that are considered unacceptable. And lead is a a really important toxin. Uh, it's very harmful. Uh, and I suspect lead is only one of the things that's probably in our water that. Uh, people are unaware of of course you know this might get people to think oh well i want to buy bottled water but um we have indications that bottled water is not all that great either uh you know i would research a good water filter if you're concerned personally about what's happening to your water or get your water tested right at the tap but um it's it's very concerning. It probably had some long-term impacts on some Canadians without their awareness of it. And uh, between that and what's going on in our food, it's no wonder our children are struggling and we're seeing rates of autism going up. Um, there's a article that the David Suzuki Foundation has on their website that talks about pesticides and autism and the rates of autism. So between chlorpyrifos in in Edmonton and lead and glyphosate and neonix. I I wonder why politicians aren't concerned, really, about them about their own families. Now of course, uh in a place like Alberta where the petrochemical business is big or in uh, Windsor, Ontario, where they have loads of petrochemical plants do you think politicians have been told by the petrochemical companies, don't worry about the stuff in the water? Well, the thing that we hear over and over again is Health Canada registers it, blah, 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 blah. And that's like the end of the conversation. There's no consideration about how, uh, what we actually test and how it tested is not even adequate to begin with, but that we don't monitor our water. We, we don't monitor it. I mean, that's why um, this investigative journalism is such an important piece because this water isn't being monitored in a meaningful way. And it's not just water, it's our food. Our food's not being monitored. So between those two things, something that you're taking into your body every single day, and we know that there is an increase in the environment in a big way, what do we think is going to happen? There's a study that just came out uh, not too long ago that showed that neonics are having a serious impact on deer. You know, they're, they're finding it in several organs of, uh, in the deer's body and there's damage to uh, organs, there's birth defects and so on. Well, if this is happening to deer, what do we think is happening to our children? And um, I dropped off an article to a local vet here on this issue because we are prescribing this very same pesticide to our dog to prevent fleas and ticks, the exact same pesticide that was in this article that showed harm to uh, 
deer. Well, dogs are generally smaller than deer. <laughs> I just, I, I'm just kind of dumbfounded that people are not using any kind of critical thinking around what this is doing. And of course, Rover can't complain about, you know, symptoms, things that ache or hurt. The next thing you know, though, oh, your dog's dead or dying, and you don't know why. You just go and get another pet. Yeah, or your dog has seizures um, from a neurotoxin that you're actually, you know, you're giving a neurotoxin to your dog. And if your dog has seizures, are we making the connection between that and the pesticide? Well, a lot of these things, it's not required that a lot of these things are even reported. So there's no tracking back to the cause. And the same thing with dog food. Dog food's very highly polluted, probably far worse than than, uh, our food is. So when we see higher rates of cancer happening in dogs and cats, just like we're seeing in people, I mean, cancer is now the leading cause of death for Canadians. It it surpasses every other um, cause of death in Canada now. Do we really think this is genetic or... Do we think that there is enough environmental concerns out there? We should start paying attention to what we're doing. We'll have more with Cheryl McComsey right after the break. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Cheryl McComsey. Cheryl, is one of the problems in Canada that Health Canada, provinces, cities don't have regulations or laws saying this is the maximum amount of a contaminant you can have. They just have guidelines. There's no legal teeth to it. Is that the big problem here? Well, I think it's one way that people can ignore the issue is, you know, um, as long as we don't have actual standards that are consistent, and if we don't have monitoring, I mean, you can even have standards, but if you don't have any monitoring, you don't even know when you've exceeded those standards. We haven't, we have not reviewed our water, um, standards or guidelines or whatever you want to call them since 1987. 1987. And since that time, there's been all kinds of things going on, clearly, that are, you know, happening to our water. Um, we're, we're certainly seeing pollution in our water. Just because your water looks good doesn't mean that it's not polluted. And this is happening in Canada through mining, oil and gas, and agriculture. Our water, we've taken it for granted. And without having good standards that are enforced, well, this is not going to end well. It's going to have it's going to have consequences. I believe it's already having consequences. Former Prime Minister Stephen Harper, his government uh, removed protected status from something like three million waterways. There's only ninety official protected waterways in Canada now, and apparently most of them are uh, on waterfronts where uh, former Tory politicians have retired. I'm not kidding. That's what my yeah. research found. Uh, and, uh, they talked about Trudeau's environmental standards and so on, but I haven't seen a reinstatement of protecting all of Canada's water again. Yeah, no, it hasn't been happening. It's certainly not been happening. And, uh, like, and, and so do you ever hear a politician stand up and say, I'm going to make water an issue or I'm going to take the initiative to protect 
Canadian water. I really haven't heard that coming from anyone. You know, maybe the Greens have it in their policies and uh, so on, but I have not seen it or heard it yet anywhere. So it's a big deal. It's, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of chronic diseases that are increasing. One, one interesting thing that happened recently is there's a couple of Sri Lankan scientists that link glyphosate to uh, chronic kidney disease, a fatal form of a kidney disease, and they ended up uh, in the same situation. We're seeing a lot of scientists in Canada who take a stand. They were, you know, attacked by the industry, basically, is probably where it's all coming from. But they recently won an award um, for their endeavors, and, and they were uh, widely peer-reviewed. There's a science to show that definitely glyphosate is linked to kidney disease, and we're seeing kidney disease increasing in Canadians. Of course, there's always more than one thing that we're exposed to, but when we know that these things are increasing in our food system and there are residues of this in our food system in, in levels that are unacceptable and we have all these other things going on that we don't even know about, it's going to have consequences and it's going to have a cost. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I'm dumbfounded that there isn't more outrage about it. Like, this is quite an important story, the, the lead contamination, and I, I really feel like people should be really upset but I don't really see that very much. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. We'll have more with Cheryl McComsey right after this. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlin, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the 2019 drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com Weekly Recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com Weekly Recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Cheryl McComsey. Cheryl, you were saying there was a, a doctor who almost lost his license because he pointed out there was a high lead contamination that perhaps might be causing a rare cancer in a community. Can you tell us about it? Oh, well, actually, that wasn't lead. That yes. was um, that was in Fort Chip, uh, downstream from the tar sands. And certainly there's different contaminants in their water there. And in a small community, they've lost six people from a very rare form of cancer, which you would normally see the normal population fact, factor, I guess you could say, would be one in a 100,000 for this cancer, and yet there's like six people out of about 1,200, 1,500 people. So that's... Uh, he, he, he did have to go to court to protect his um, ability to continue to practice as a physician and won. But, um, yeah, he, um, he, tried to, he tried to bring this forward and he was just, you know, public health. Uh, I, I don't know what's wrong with them, but they certainly do not seem to focus on the real serious issues. It's amazing to me. I mean, in Edmonton, when we lived there, every single summer, spring, they would talk about West Nile virus, for example. Uh, maybe not public health, but, the, you know, city employees would talk about West Nile virus. And they had, like, one case of West Nile virus in a 10-year time frame out of about 1 million people. And it was believed this case came from outside of Alberta as well, because West Nile virus is carried in birds, and then mosquitoes get it and give it to us. As well, um, the Center for Disease Control say that of those diagnosed, only 1% develop complications. So when you look at a disease that really doesn't exist in an area, um, that's not considered all that serious most of the time, unless you're immunocompromised, why are we focusing on such obscure things when... 
kidney disease, cancer, asthma, um, all these other concerns that we have that are real are not being addressed. And why, why are they not being addressed? Why are we allowing uh, communities to literally abuse a pesticide for years and still those people who were involved with that are still working for the city of Edmonton? I, I, and right now, actually, Edmonton is looking at um, creating uh, a citizen panel of people who will advise on these issues. Well, I wonder if how many people will have a conflict of interest that might end up on that panel because there is no, you know, as far as I know, any kind of restrictions on who those people might be. So, you know, I don't know. They're, they're concerned about the messaging. They actually say that in the media. They're concerned about the messaging, but it doesn't seem like they're concerned about the reality of what they're doing. What can Joe Citizen do to get more attention paid to what's put in our food and water? Well, keep demanding cleaner food and water. Um, I, you know, if you have the time and the ability, I would write or visit your um, MLA, your MP, or your counselor, or even ask to see test results of your water. The only thing is, it's important to understand that even when you see those test results, they're still at the source. They're not at your point of cons- consumption. So in your own home, you may still have contamination in your water. We need to change how we do things in Canada, and I think that's, that people need to put pressure on government to start doing that or start considering taking legal action because I really do believe people have been harmed by this. You look at all the evidence in, in the science that we do have and what's, what we're seeing happening to the public and how we're not properly monitoring our water and haven't been for some time. It's, it's going to have consequences. I believe it already is. I would say also get a water filter. <laughs> a good one. Yeah, and run your food through it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's um, important to know your farmer and try to grow your own as much as you can. That's for sure. Cheryl, where can people get more information about this? Well, we have um, we have been talking a number of us about a Canadian group, and uh, I'm still working on that with others. Um, <laughs> if we had a website, it would certainly be helpful. I would say that you know some of the other organizations in the U.S., uh, like Pana, for example, have done a, a remarkable good job in uh, providing science, uh, up to date science. We need something for Canada. So um, right now, you know, we have Facebook pages, but we don't have, as of yet, um, a source that you could go to for everything. It's it's really up to the citizens to try to try to address it in their own community. And uh, can people email info pesticide free for Canada at gmail dot com? Certainly. We'd and love to hear from you. Cheryl, thank you so much for being on the show. Okay, thank you, Jim. My guest has been Cheryl McComsey, founder of Pesticide Free Alberta. If you have any questions for Cheryl or any of our guests, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. Find us on Twitter at Talk Digital Net. You can find us also on talkdigitalnetwork.com. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.